this particular video, I'm gonna be focusing on the master cylinder and the clutch cylinder and what it takes to uh, access those parts as well as removing them properly, bench bleeding them, and then reinstalling them. And uh, the reason I even started this project is because I was having a leak underneath my clutch pedal. Many of the people on the Facebook group mentioned that getting in there and working on these was probably the hardest thing they had done as far as um, it being really fiddly and very difficult and challenging because it's so tight behind the dash. Opening this up was a challenge, but I found that removing basically the entire dash made it much more accessible. It's more time consuming on the front end, taking it all out, but it's less hassle actually replacing the parts. Because the dash itself is a bit of an undertaking to completely pull it apart successfully, I am providing a link to a video that just focuses on the dash. So if you're going to have to get into the master cylinder and the clutch cylinder, and you do decide to go to the, to the long end of this project in the sense of removing the whole dash, uh, please click the link and it'll take you directly to that. You might wanna watch that video as a precursor to this master cylinder and clutch cylinder replacement video. So this is my master cylinder ordered online to the specs for the 88 van. It did not come with a bench bleed kit. So I went to O'Reilly's and grabbed a master cylinder bleeder kit. So this is air duct number three. It says to remove this down here as well. Yeah, I like that. I know he doesn't come out of top. He has to come out down below. The thing that's really holding it up is this square piece here does not go past that, at least not that I can tell. So, it's really annoying. And they say you're supposed to remove it before you can do master cylinder and clutch cylinder. So, I have no idea how I'm supposed to do this. I'm gonna have to figure it out. I'd love to get this plastic framework out of my way so that I can get into this without any obstruction. So unplug the defrost button. But my rear wiper, unplug my rear fan. Oh. I would like to be able to remove this bracket, possibly, that holds the steering wheel in place. So I need to remove this. looking at the master cylinder here, the booster, and then your clutch cylinder sits back in here. I feel like it'd be so much easier to be able to get this air duct out of the way. I have more open area in here. fully invested at this point. You can see the dampness on the clutch cylinder. That's where my leak has been this whole time. So the next thing I'm gonna do with this is pull the steering wheel. I rented a tool from O'Reilly's. Uh, it's a harmonic balancer puller kit. Looks like this. Costs 35 bucks to rent, and as long as you return it like a good little citizen, then it's uh, free. You just return the, uh, just return it to them and there's no charge. There it goes, got it. Yep, it did. Your clutch hard line disconnect is a 12 mil. Your hard line disconnect on the master is a 10 mil. Big bolts on the tops are 20, it's a 22 mil. One of the first things I'm going to do is take the uh, reservoir and 
dump out the excess fluid. Fish out my little filter. This one reservoir is feeding both the clutch and the master cylinder. And with that being the case, it has a separation in here. They have uh, some of the things on toyotavantech.com is that there is actually a separation inside the chamber. So in order for this to, to be bled properly, to function properly, you literally need to fill it to the max line. And then that way it fills up and flows into both wells inside this one reservoir. To go back inside here and get that pin out, I'm gonna use this picking tool. And hopefully, yep, right there, got it out. So you've got that, so the pin comes straight out, like so. Okay, that's now loose, there's your pin. So the first time since 1988, these lines have been cracked loose. The one thing that you need to keep in mind is that brake fluid is highly corrosive to paint. So um, you wanna try to avoid, as best you can, having a bunch of this stuff leak out all over the, the paint on the interior of the car. Down in here you have two bolts that are holding the clutch in place. Um, if you'll notice them, they're here and here. I'm going to loosen those guys up and then I'm going to pull the clutch. I'm going to go ahead and crack this line open. Okay, there we go. All right. Keep it as level as possible so I don't end up losing a lot more fluid down inside. Forgot about the fact that I do have a sensor. So you need to undo him before you can get it out of here. This guy, which is the exact same brand, this says it is branded ASIN. This one is as well. Should be exact same thing. One thing that you'll notice is the distance between the threads here and here. And so what I need to do is um, try to match these two up as best I can. So if I'm lining up by connections there of the end and then that, I would say that's pretty dad jam close. Hold that in place and tighten that down. There's no distinct difference getting that in there. All right, so then I'm gonna tighten these down. So I've screwed both of these plastic inserts into the master cylinder. And what I need to do is I'm gonna fill this guy up with fluid and then I'll, f I'll put these in there and let it just, it's gonna cycle it is what it's gonna do. So I'm gonna fill this up till it's full. I'm gonna take the filter out and leave it out during this process there. All right, so they're in. Once you have these lines run up into the reservoir, under this circumstance, I can use it, just overfill it. And once you depress the actual cylinder uh, several times, you saw what I was doing where I was just taking and depressing the cylinder several times. And in doing that, it's forcing the air that's trapped inside the cylinder back into the reservoir, and it just recycles the whole thing. So if you look, you can tell there's no air in that at all. One person said not to overextend like your your press on this. Don't overpress it. You could actually cause damage. So you can feel a little bit of resistance in there and I didn't push beyond that. Same deal with this. Let it go into there. Do the same thing with this. So I'm going to take the clutch, 
pull out the cap. You need to keep the tube submerged, otherwise it just sucks air into the system. Okay, no air. This is the hard part I think they're talking about. Being able to get your hand up in there to put the pin in place. Which is not easy. Okay, there's that. Rotate your hand in such a way to where the cotter pin is where it needs to be. There it is. One of the guys said that that was the hardest thing to do, is get the stinking pin back in place. I've bolted the reservoir back on, uh, as you were seeing before. I've tight made sure everything was tightened down, tightened down all my fittings. Um, also, I checked the clutch fitting as well, uh, the, the, where the tube comes into that banjo fit. And everything is tight. It's all completely back together. hope the video is helpful. If you are enjoying these or at least finding a little bit of value in them, be sure to subscribe. Share the knowledge with others. That's one thing that's really awesome about what I've been finding online is that people realize that word of mouth and sharing knowledge is really, really important and it's very appreciated. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.